Hey class, welcome back. We're doing some ceramic tips on things that you need to know about your clay in your classroom. All right, so today's uh, today's tips are the top three ceramic technique tips. Uh, look, check out the following video and hope you guys get uh, get some knowledge. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and put some comments down below because I always like to hear from my classmates, see what you guys are thinking about. Welcome back class. We're going to be working on some clay stuff today. So the big thing I want to start off with is the types of clay that we use. All right, so here we have an earthenware. This is your basic terracotta. Uh, usually it's a Lizella clay. Uh, this stuff I detest. I personally don't like it myself. It's just not a good clay for me to use. Uh, but this is actually great for doing construction builds. We're actually building something like a house or slab project. We'll get into that in just a second. In the middle here we have our basic low fire clay. This is a uh, 0406 medium body clay. What I like about this is it burns perfectly white when it's done. So at, when it comes out of the kiln it looks nice and bright white like this. Good for, good for glaze application but this is a low fire clay whereas this is a terracotta all right then we're up to the high fire clay which is the this is the butter clay is what we like to call this stuff uh, the butter clay is a high fire clay only we put this into the kiln take it up to cone 6 not cone 06 uh, this one fires about 1900 degrees whereas this one fires up closer to 2300 degrees uh, two three zero zero twenty two thousand over two thousand degrees so nice and hot all right so a couple things we need to talk about with these clays with this terracotta the low fire and the high fire clay is what can we do with these what are the three basic things that we can build all right so you have three basic things and techniques that you do when you're working with clay. Number one is a pinch pot and I'll do that with the low fire clay because it makes it easier. Alright so I'm going to take just a glob of this clay here, roll it up into a ball in my hand. Now the pinch technique is where you plug your thumb down in the middle and you pinch and rotate around and you're just simply doing a, you're pinching the clay together to make the form, hence why it's called a pinch pot. Uh, it's being pinched into that shape. Now as I'm pinching I'm doing like slight pinch, slight roll uh, but just pressing the clay out, forming it in my hands to create that cup or bowl shape. Um, simple pinch pot. Using the low fire clay, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, coil technique. So taking again another knob of clay, taking just a smaller, rolling out a little sausage in between, start it in between with your hands just like so, uh, using the whole hand. Now when you put it on the board, I'm using primarily the palm of my hand, some of the fingers, but that's once it's actually gotten out, I'm just kind of make it all even. All right, so let me put the crap off to the side. All right, sliding it down. Notice how I'm rolling, using my hand, slide it back and forth. Uh, now when I'm rolling, I need to use two hands. I glide them from the middle out like this. It helps to give it a more uniform shape. Try and find the excess pieces, what parts are a little thick, what parts are a little thin. There's a flat coil. If I roll this up to make a spiral design, just rolling one piece over the other. Now let's talk about some plasticity. What's plasticity? Plasticity is the how much you can stretch some clay. So why I like this instead of this? Well, when I'm doing something like this, I don't have all this crack, this crumble bit. Now these these clays are about the same um, moist, wet quality. Uh, they've both been in our clay recycle buckets, so they're good clay to use, they're fine to use, you can use them. But the gray clay stretches better. Case in point, so I got this coil, everything worked out. You saw me roll it out real easy, real nicely. I'm gonna use the terracotta clay, do the same exact thing. Now, as I'm rolling it out, I'm already starting to see some cracking along this. Now, the reason that's a big factor is because of the plasticity of the clay, how far I can stretch it, how far can I pull this clay apart to make it do what I want it to do. So as I roll this one around, now, both of them do the exact same thing. However, this clay has to be a lot more wet to make it actually to run the coils. And then when I go to smooth it, uh, it's just not going to have nearly as much stretch as the gray clay. It's just a clay body thing. Uh, the plasticity in this clay is just more superior to the Lizella. So, 
when you're working with clay, make sure that you know the plasticity of it, so how far you can stretch that clay out so that you can do the stuff that you want to do. All right, next thing, you're going to use some of this white clay to make some slabs. Well, what's a slab? Well, you have a couple ways you can do this. You can take a rolling pin, roll these things out uh, to where you have a stretch of clay. Looks like a uh, cutting board, pretty much. Uh, that's how I make my tiles. I just roll out a slab of clay, cut it out to the tile form that I want to do. Unless I want to do a super big tile, like this, where I have to put feet on the back of it to do my painting pieces. Um, but it all base, bases off the same principle. So it's rolling out a thin sheet of clay uh, to where you can uh, attach different things to it. You can build with it, top build my little houses. Um, but slab is just rolling out that stretch of clay to where you can build something much easier. Build your walls, build your shapes a lot easier with slab clay. All right, so in clay, a couple things we gotta talk about. Um, you have three different levels of the clay. So this is your raw greenware. Uh, actually, technically, before anything's fired the first time, before it goes into the bisque firing, it is all greenware because it is green, it's still fresh, I can use it. Uh, I can take this piece of bone dry clay, toss it in the recycle bucket, make some new clay out of it, and it works just fine. However, if I was to take this piece or this piece, which have been bisque fired, these pieces, if I toss them in water, they'll just sit there. They're not going to do anything because all of the physical water has been baked out. Actually, all the chemical water has been baked out of it. The physical water that makes this squishy has dried out of this, causing it to be a bone dry clay. Now, let's work backwards from there. All right, so these pieces sat up for a minute or so. They're starting to dry out some, and as they start to dry out, they go to the second phase. The second phase is leather hard. The reason it's called leather hard is because it's it's still moves a little bit like leather, but it will hold its shape more so. It'll hold, it'll stand up on its side and not fall apart, whereas, you know, some, some clay, a fresh piece of clay will fall apart real bad. Um, leather hard stage is kind of the best stage to work with, especially if you're using slabs. I roll it out a slab, let it firm up for a little bit, then I can cut, shape it, mold it, do everything I need to do with it, but it holds its shape so the house won't fall down. Now, the our first wear is your raw. This is when it is best to just pull this out of the clay bucket, toss it on the wheel head, uh, start building with it, start doing your preliminary pieces. That's the best time to work with clay uh, to do a lot of things. We're going to have to stretch it. Full plasticity is when you have raw clay. Leather hard, not so much plasticity. It doesn't stretch so much. Good for building at that point. Bone dry, ooh, need to be very, very delicate with this because if you're not, it'll break into a million pieces. So. Bone dry, most fragile, leather hard, best to work with. Green or raw is when it is the freshest, perfect clay to take out and start building and working with. All right, now after we have one firing down, our bisque firing, the second thing that we're gonna go to is our glazing technique. We'll get into that in just a second. Let's real quickly talk about while we're working with clay, what do we need to do? All right, so one of the big things that uh, most people kind of have an argument about is when you have to use slip. Now what is slip? Slip is this uh, mayonnaise goopy consistency that resides in this little cup here and all this is is some taking some clay, put some water in it, makes this wet clay mash uh, mayonnaise can kind of consistency and this is our binder glue when we, when we have to uh, join two pieces together. All right, so right here, you can see that this is some fresh and raw clay. All I'm doing is I'm taking this bit of clay here and just gonna start stretching it. Just roll it out in some sausages, use some coil pieces. All right, so if I've taken this clay, this is a, uh, this is what we like to call Monday to Wednesday clay. All right, and what that process is, is this is Monday, I'm working on this one day, and taking my clay and I can join these two pieces together just equally okay Monday to Monday clay all works the same same day same time all right now let's say this is Wednesday clay all right this stuff has been sitting out for some time well this time I don't necessarily want to add Mon Wednesday clay to Monday clay why because this clay has dried out it's not the same moisture content anymore this might be almost a leather hard consistency as this is the raw consistency so what do I have to do I need to add slip in between so what I'm going to use is one of my handy dandy little throwing tools this one's got some little teeth on it 
and I'm going to scratch that top surface to create a um, basically like a, a grip system like this. And what that does is when I've scratched along that surface, I can then take my slip. I got another slip right here. Notice how this is the gray, this is the white because this is a different clay. Um, I can take some of my slip right here, so this you know mayonnaise consistency, paint it on. Around the around the piece like so, move it so you guys can see. All right, paint it around the edge just like so. Do, do, do. Then I can take my my new clay and I can add it on top. Well, if this clay has more water than this clay, but you put this watery stuff in between, this is not going to mess it up. Not really. What I'm doing is I'm creating a mash. So all I've done is I've scratched away the top surface of that clay. I've put this really loose watery clay in between it, and now this stuff will all become the same water level. So when I add on that fresh clay on top, they'll all lock together and work as one jointed piece. It just helps make sure that it doesn't crack, bend, break, anything of that nasty nature. Everything works together just as fine. Make sense? All right, class, the next thing we gotta talk about is wedging. So why do we have to wedge? Well, the wedging is so that you can take air that's inside of this clay out before you start putting it on the kiln. Uh, sorry, before you start putting it on the wheel. All right, so for wedging, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my clay, take my cutter, whoop, just cut this piece in half. Now, looking at it first, I've got an air pocket kind of going through the, the middle seam right here. So take my clay, smash it on my board, take another bit of clay, smash it right on top. And you have two basic styles to, to, for wedging. Number one is the ram's head piece where you're pushing clay directly out, rolling it back on itself, and pushing it out again. And as you keep doing this, and you're pushing the clay out, it starts to create these two channels on either side that make looks like ram's horns. All right, so push, rotate, push, rotate. I need like some bread. Makes me feel like PETA, Hunger Games. Then cut it check. Ooh, look, no holes this time. Uh, one thing I do want you to notice is if you have any strange pieces in your clay, such as this little bit of plaster, pull it out, put it off to the side. Uh, that should go into the trash can. Do not recycle that again. Uh, just because that, when you start using it on the wheel, will actually tear. Uh, when the clay's spinning around, it'll cause a tear into the piece and it just won't work out well. So take it, smash it again. All right, so this technique, it's called the chrysanthemum technique. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm, as I'm rolling on one side, I'm pushing downward on the other side and using this hand to kind of block it. So it'll go in sort of a triangle shape. Now, the reason it's called chrysanthemum is because as I'm pushing and rotating around, I have this nice cone on one side, and on the other side, a nice spiral. It looks like a chrysanthemum flower. So, rotate it around like to dock it on the side a little bit. So this is ready to go onto the wheel head. Now, uh, this has also been known to be called an elephant's butt. Make sure that you have a flat surface on here, not these little bitty uh, rims. What I would do is I'd probably wedge this one more time, just make sure it's completely flat, just because uh, when you start to throw it on the wheel, as the centrifugal force will bring it up, these pieces down here can cause water to seep in and unlock it from the wheel head once you started throwing. So try and get it as smooth as possible. Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, work on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest, or no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, GroupMe, that's a new one for me, and Steam, uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe, see you guys later, next class. Follow, see you later, next class, do your homework. <laughs>